Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to We Love Metal, an exclusive interview with Brian from Immortal Dominion. How are you doing today? Excellent. How are you doing? Good, good. I think right off the top we should talk about Primordial coming out March 22nd. Uh, you guys must be pretty proud of that effort. Yeah, it really was a long time coming and a lot of hard work, that's for sure. Uh, we're real happy with the outcome. Now, it was five years in between albums, so, you know, how did this one come about? Uh, you know, we kind of went through a lot of uh, different adversities and things like that through the last five years, and, and uh, this album, um, you know, came about just by finding our producer, Sterling Winfield, uh, who's produced everything from Pantera to Hell Yeah to Merciful Fate, and uh, with his scheduling and our scheduling and stuff like that, it took a while, but I think in the end we were able to go through it over and over again and really, with a fine-tooth comb, um, cut out all the stuff that we thought was weak. Excellent. Now, I... I guess I have to ask how, I mean, you guys were known pretty much as a hardcore band, and this, this album, for me, personally, leaned more on, like, thrash, hard rock type. Um, was that done on purpose, or just where the band's at right now? You know, I think it was just how we've evolved over the years, and then when Sterling came in, he might have slowed things down and kind of helped us with some st song structure also. In the past, we've been kind of eclectic and all over the place, even in just the same song. And I think he wanted to make something that was a little more cohesive for the listener to be able to understand the point we we're trying to get across. Uh, do you think it's hurt uh, your old fan base at all, or do you think they've come along for the ride with you? You know, it, it's hard to tell. Uh, even on our first EP back in 1996, we had a song called Brighter Days that was a real slow, Nirvana-almost-sounding song. And, uh, you know, on the second album, it was a lot of death metal with, mixed with thrash, but there was even a song in there some people compared to punk. Um, so we've always kind of been all over the board. You know, you either love us or hate us, I guess. <laughs> well, the, when we reviewed the album, um, we focused on a lot of people had told us in the industry that you guys were trying to break into the mainstream, but to be honest, I didn't find that. I found that it, it just seemed like a natural evolution of sound. So, you know, is that how you guys feel? I mean, this isn't about money. I think it's about the art, is it not? Yeah, you know, these songs have been written for the last over the last five years. We really haven't changed anything we've done or made a concentrated effort to write any sort of style. Um, we just kind of write what's in us, and I think every album we make kind of reflects maybe what we've been through personally over those years. Definitely, and uh, you guys actually have two uh, two people handling, well, lead vocals, correct? Um, sort of, yeah, yeah. Um, Ray, our our our, uh, our lead singer, does does uh, you know a lot of the vocals, and then I do a lot of backups. But every once in a while, I do step in and, and do some leads. Does it uh, does it make the songwriting process any different, knowing that you've got two solid voices there? You know, it, it, maybe it does. It's really just a lot of experimentation. You know, we're always surprised with the outcome as, as much as anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask a little bit. I did some reading about the uh, the soundtrack for the movie, the indie film, Teeth, that you guys did. Do you consider that a major break in your career? You know, we didn't at first, especially when they told us what the movie was about. <laughs> um, we thought it was going to be just a B, B kind of a gross flick or something like that. When it came out and started winning awards at, at Sundance, we were like, holy crap. And then um, next thing we know, Lionsgate is buying it. It's a blockbuster video exclusive, you know, and all this stuff. And it's taken off all over. I, I turned on the TV and the Scream Awards were on. And Marilyn Manson's given an award to the damn movie. I was just shocked. So, yeah, it was pretty major for us. Did you have the songs written before, Brian, or was it something you wrote specifically for the movie? Yeah, that album had been out for quite a while. Um, our distributor had a band who was who was on the soundtrack, and, and they broke up and started arguing about song rights. So he sent them 15 more bands that he distributed, and they picked our album, and instead of wanting one song, they wanted five. So. Excellent. That That is a break, then. You, know. you guys, are, you've been around since uh, 2002, I believe, and uh, do you feel that you've had that big break, or do you think it's time for that big break, that, that big mainstream success? That's, you know, that's definitely what we're hoping for. We'd love to get out there and just kind of take the next step up from being, you know, a well-known local band around here to hopefully at least stepping out into the national scene, you know, uh, a lot more than we have in the past. Is there been any, I mean, this album, I haven't seen a bad review myself on it yet, and I know we certainly didn't give it one. Um, are you hearing anything from the big labels? You know, anything you can let us in on? No, uh, no, haven't haven't really even pursued the labels. We have a, a startup indie label called 427 Records that's backing us, and we're just going after kind of our own PR 
and things like that. And uh, we're just going to build the buzz up, and hopefully we can jump on, um, you know, supporting some kind of a national act this summer or maybe one of the summer festivals. That's what we're looking at right now. Excellent. Now, right now we've got a... I don't know really though the word for it. There's this increase in in metalcore, and some of it's good. I mean, some of it's good, and some of it's really, really bad. But even some of the really bad stuff, they're they're getting signed, they're getting tour support, they're getting out there. For guys that are, are coming on veteran status, that that's got to be a little disheartening to you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's partially, you know, it's partially about your music. It's partially about maybe where you're located in the country. Um, we're right in the middle of, of, you know, northern Colorado where there's really not a huge music scene going on. Um, so I think, you know, probably a lot of those bands are from, you know, larger, larger, uh, demographics, you know, and things like that. For me, you know, bands get signed and dropped every day and the, the record deals bands are getting nowadays, they're taking everything. I mean, they, you know, these bands aren't making much money. I, I even heard of a band that's paid 10 grand just to get signed. And that doesn't sound like a record deal to me. <laughs> you know? No. Oh, you know, it, it's just all perspective, I suppose. That goes back to the days of being paid to go on stage, or paying to go on stage. It's kind of a step backwards. Yeah, exactly. Now, with that being said, with, with the internet and, and with downloading and, and poor record sales and, and an industry that's kind of in turmoil, where do you see metal going, like as a genre? What do you, what do you think it's going to be in, say, next year or even ten years? Oh, boy, that, that's a really good question. You know, I, I think... Um, I think we're due, it seems to me we're due for something new. Um, it seems like a lot of the stuff's been played out, even to the point of, you know, Avenged Sevenfold and Five Finger Death Punch that are trying to do pretty well right now or Disturbed or any of these guys. A lot of these guys are on their third or fourth album. They're, they're starting to, it seems like they're starting to decline. And I think, I think everybody's ready just for something new and fresh in general. And whatever does come out, it needs to be, you just need that magical band, I think, to kind of set everything on fire for, for the whole genre. Definitely. I think after people hear this album, they might put you in that category because it's fresh. It's it's really good. Um, we had a question from a viewer that uh, wanted to ask you about metal and non-metal influences when you write, when the band writes. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, just like anybody, we, we listen to a wide spectrum. Uh, Ray and I, the lead singer and I, met back in 1992 when we started just writing songs for different things, not even for this band together and I mean one of the things we had in common is we were both huge Prince fans so you know you can go from everything from Prince to uh, gangster rap to uh, you know all the grunge and Nirvana you know kind of hit us in the 90s and then um, taking it on up you know we really got into a lot of the death metal and uh, even some of the hybrid you know grindcore I really love where bands like here from Colorado we have Cephalic Carnage mixing jazz in with grindcore music and getting real creative there's something about the Rocky Mountain high altitude you know <laughs> we're not getting enough oxygen up here so um, so we're all real creative I think a lot of the bands are and uh, um, so you know we are all over the spectrum as far as that goes but ultimately um, this album was about writing uh, songs that can stick in people's head and songs that just the, the average person can comprehend you know exactly what you're doing instead of a whole bunch of musicians soloing over top of each other constantly yeah fair enough that is an issue um i'll ask you a question i don't ask many people but you guys you, you know you've got a very varied style that uh you know you've incorporated a lot can you tell people that mock it what the appeal to death metal is you know, I think um, it depends. I, I think like any genre, you know, you've got thousands and thousands of bands trying to do it, and probably only a few that do it really well. Um, when I first heard death metal, I think a lot of people are put off by the growling vocals more than anything, not so much the high screaming stuff. And I guess maybe it's just the energy that it gives. It, it makes people feel uncomfortable. But for me, bands like Morbid Angel and Deicide and Cannibal Corpse, you know, and stuff like that, that the musicianship and and if you can pick out one thing you do like about it, I would I would think most people would have to admire the drumming um, for a lot of these real technical death metal bands because it's highly skilled stuff and very hard to pull off. Um, so I think death metal is one of those things that's either done really really well or it's done extremely poorly. I guarantee you, Brian, this will be the first heavy metal interview that has Prince and Cannibal Corpse in it all in one. <laughs> Is there any shout-outs or anything you'd like to say about the album before we sign off? Uh, you know, no, I just, uh, it, you know, it comes out nationwide uh, March 22nd, um, you know, and, and I just invite everybody to please come and go wherever you go to listen to music, whether it be Reverb Nation or iTunes or MySpace or wherever you go, and just uh, give us a chance and give us a listen and see what you think. 
Well, I want to thank you so much for doing this, Brian. Thank you.